Hey all, here's the lesson from Monday in week three where we basically just went through the discussion journals for a handful of dates and I explained, you know, how to answer them, what I'm expecting from each answer, and so on and so forth. So the first discussion journal is a summary question. It's asking you to write a summary of the plot of the story. So if you remember from our lesson, the plot is just the action in a story. It's just what happens. So in this case, for number one, you're not going to write a paragraph. You're going to write a list. So you'll have anywhere from, you know, one to probably about 15 or 20 events in this story. Um, and what you're going to do is you're going to write this list of events, and then you're going to choose three that are the most important, and then explain in a sentence why those are the most important. But I've had the question before, what is an event in a story? Um, so to answer what is an event, it's important to understand what is not an event. So let's take a look at the story. Okay, so if you're reading these first couple pages, the boy talks about going to the Quran, going to the mosque, excuse me, reading the Quran, jumping in the river, swimming, playing, um, and you might be tempted to think, okay, here's where the story starts. These are all events. But this is actually just background. Um, the story doesn't really start until the second page right here, where we have this phrase, one day. All this other stuff is really just setting the scene. The first page and then the first paragraph of the second page is really just telling us, what the relationship is between the boy and the grandfather, what the relationship is between the boy and his environment. Um, so those aren't events mainly because it doesn't give us any information about when they happened. It's just generally this is what happened in the past. Um, and so the events of the story really start here. One day I asked him, about our neighbor Masood, I said to my grandfather, I fancy you don't like our neighbor Masood. Okay. There, we have a specific time, one day, where something happened. Uh, he asks his grandfather about Masood. And this is going to be your first event of the story. And so, what you're going to do is not take a direct quote, but you're going to summarize this. Okay, event number one, the boy asks his grandfather about their neighbor Masood, uh, or the boy asks his grandfather why he doesn't like their neighbor Masood. And then event number two will be the grandfather's response. The grandfather responds, um, basically this whole part is the grandfather's response. The grandfather responds that, Masood was lazy, and that he had a bunch of land that he inherited from his father that he just let go to waste. Um, and so that would be my second event, um, the grandfather's response. And so you notice we summarized those. We're not taking direct quotes, we're not going line by line. We have to think about it in terms of what makes sense to call an event. It's important to note that this first paragraph up here is not an event. Because really, all this paragraph is, is the boy giving his reactions, giving his internal reflection about what happened. Um, and while that's valuable information, it's not an event in the story. It's not dialogue, and it's not action. So those are really the the main things we want to be looking for in terms of events. Does something happen in the story, or does someone say something in the story? So your third event probably is going to be when the grandfather asks 
why Masood sold his land. And then the fourth event will be the grandfather's response. And then the fifth event will be somewhere down here. Um, that makes sense? Okay, so it's just going to be a, literally a list. Looking at question number two now. Question number two and question number three are characterization questions. It's going to ask you what a certain character is like. So question number two is a two-part question. That means you're going to have two paragraphs. Question, uh, the, part, the first part of question two is asking you about paragraphs one and two. So obviously that's this first page right here. And it's asking you, how does the boy feel about his grandfather in these first two paragraphs? And there are a lot of clues here. Right at the bottom of paragraph two, there's a sentence that basically tells you how he feels, but there's also a lot of the physical description of the grandfather. Um, a lot of these things will tell you how he feels. So from questions two to five, this holds true. Support your ideas with evidence, meaning quotes. Um, so that shouldn't be anything new to you. These responses are going to follow our response paragraph structure in that it's going to be a, a paragraph response. It's not going to be like I'm asking you to write an entire essay for each one of these. It's just going to be a short paragraph with a topic sentence that answers the question, then quote, paraphrase, analysis. So your topic sentence for this one might be, in paragraphs one and two, it's clear that the boy sees his grandfather as you know, blank, you know, fill in the blank. Part B is asking you to read paragraphs 4 through 11 and answer the same question. What do you think the boy feels about his grandfather after 4 through 11? Why does he feel fear at the grandfather's words? Why does he pity Masood? And so 4 through 11, so I know your copy doesn't have the numbers on it, but paragraph 4 through 11 is on the second page, and it's this whole section up through here. So you're going to read this section and then answer the question about why does the boy feel fear at what his grandfather is saying? And what does that mean about how he feels about the grandfather? Again, same response structure. You're going to need a, a quote, at least one quote, um, for this answer. Question number three is asking you to choose one of these characters, the grandfather, the boy, or Masood. Um, so for each character, for, not for each character, but for the one character you choose, you're going to find three parts in the story that offer information about that character. So this goes back to our class notes and our class discussion on characterization. How do we find out what a character is like? Well, as the question says, we look at what the character says, we look at what the character does, we look at what other characters are saying about that character, um, what the, the character's actions. And so you could choose either one of these characters. And for that character, it's important that you pick information from three different parts of the story. And the reason for that is that the characters change throughout the story. The boy is the main character, so you expect the boy to change. Uh, in any story, the main character is generally supposed to undergo some sort of change or some sort of transformation. So if you pick all your information for the boy from the first page, you're not getting a complete picture. Um, and same thing with any of the other characters. So, you're going to pick lines of dialogue, or physical descriptions, or descriptions of the actions that that character takes. And then you're going to create a paragraph where you tell us what kind of person that character is. 
So again, topic sentence, quote, paraphrase, analysis. Um, so after reading a handful of dates, it's clear that the grandfather is blank type of a person. Um, after reading this story, the narrator, or the boy, is clearly a blank type of character. Or, you know, on thinking of the story, Masood seems to be blank. And so that, that's fairly straightforward. You're going to gather your evidence and then put it together um, in, into a paragraph. Number four is specifically about Masood, and questions four and five are about the end of the story. So question number four is asking you to reread the last two paragraphs of the story and consider, which means analyze, consider the part when the boy states, I felt myself drawing close to Masood, felt my hand stretch out towards him as though I wanted to touch the hem of his garment. And you can see that that's talking about these last two paragraphs here. So this is after they've harvested the dates. This is after they've divided up the dates and taken them away. And who, uh, Masood is left with nothing. And it's this quote here. The question is asking you, why does Masood seem like such a sympathetic character to the boy at the end of the story? Basically, what reason would the boy have to reach out towards the hem of his garment? What has happened throughout this story that makes the boy feel this way? What does this moment show us about how the boy feels towards Masood? Um, and what does this tell us about how he feels about his grandfather at this moment? So this story really is about the relationship between the boy and the grandfather and how that changes all throughout the story. So the fourth question is asking you, to talk about that. And if you look at the question, it tells you to use this quote. Um, I felt myself drawing close to Masood, reaching out my hand towards his garment. Um, so you're going to analyze that quote and you're going to tell us what it means about the boy's feelings for Masood. Question number five is asking about this last sentence here. This is after the boy runs off from his grandfather and he's he's running away and he says he feels like he hates his grandfather then without knowing why i put my finger into my throat and spewed up the dates i'd eaten so the question number five is asking you how is this last action of the story symbolic and it's interesting it doesn't ask you is it symbolic it asks you how it's symbolic so you, you're to assume that there is some deeper meaning here, some symbolic value. Some things to consider with this question. Remember that in this previous paragraph here, um, on this side of the page, we see the grandfather giving the dates to the boy, um, and then the boy eats them. So you have to think in terms of symbolic value, what do the dates represent? So, again, the dates are something that the grandfather is giving to the boy. What else throughout the story is the grandfather trying to give to the boy? Um, just in general, not really a physical thing, but through their relationship. What is the grandfather trying to give the boy? And then, how does this act of vomiting up the dates, how does this illuminate the nature of their relationship? What does this action say about what has happened to their relationship, about how the boy feels about the grandfather at this point? And that's just, that's a rundown of the discussion journal questions.